Okay, let's head back to Adam now, who is with the chair of the New Hampshire Republican Party, Chris Ager. So Chris Ager is here tonight. Uh, Chris, you know, uh, big picture, you were looking to shepherd a process that's fair and open and transparent, gives a, a fair shake to all the candidates. As we see this uh, tonight with Donald Trump moving on, how do you think this First in the Nation 2024 shook out? I think it's, it, it did very well. Look, we had 14 candidates at one point who were, you know, legitimate, uh, serious candidates. The field went out itself down. We didn't put our toe on the scale. We helped everyone get their word out. And then candidates decided if they thought they were competitive or not. And so the people of New Hampshire won and were able to pick who they wanted to pick. The, our process has been similar for over 40 years. So if a campaign says, well, I don't like the fact that we had undeclared or I didn't like this, that's the way it's been. I'll buy you a box of tissues if you don't like it. But everybody knew that going in. It's been that way for a long time. And the candidates competed, and Donald Trump won with that process. And so I think it's a really good, really good process, good results in terms of fairness. And Ron McDaniel, RNC chair, plus five RNC members were here observing. I think we sold them once again that our First in the Nation primary is very well executed, and we've got support for all of them to maintain it in 2028. Yeah, and the open primary that you mentioned, it's been in a political football for a long time, uh, especially among Republicans who are saying, oh, we have all these non-conservatives voting. But speak about the perspective of you have a lot of Republican voters who came into the party tonight. You want to be able to hold on to these people for the long term. Well, you know, we live in a, in a purple-ish state, you know, and so narrowing our party is not going to help you win. We've got to expand it and educate people on our policies and why they're better for the average person. And you don't do that by saying, you know, you're not welcome. You do that by welcoming everyone in and then convincing them to adopt more and more of our policies because we can show that they work. And look, in Manchester, we just did that. And it's a nonpartisan race in name only. And the mayor and the board of aldermen flipped. Now it's up to them to perform. And that's what it's all about, is performing for the people of the state of New Hampshire. Yeah, and you mentioned that getting out there and doing things. Uh, just speaking briefly about Governor Chris Sununu, I don't think we've mentioned him yet tonight, but the amount of work that he put in for Nikki Haley, obviously the candidate's the candidate, but man, you think about this margin, if it's only under 10, how much of that do you think that help from Governor Chris Sununu might have been a big one? Huh? Uh, it, it may have been, but I believe that the people of New Hampshire make their own decisions. I mean, live free or die, you're gonna yeah. assess the candidate and decide. I don't know of a single person in this state that said, boy, I'm going to vote for candidate A because they were endorsed by some other person. People generally don't do that. The governor's infrastructure and, and his support across the state, I think, helped Nikki Haley get her word out. But it's really, you know, people deciding on Nikki Haley not on someone else's endorsement. Mm -hmm. And on the flip side of that, uh, really quickly as we wrap up here, obviously, big base of the Republican Party still clearly with Donald Trump. Uh, there's no question. And not only the base of the party, but that larger field of undeclared voters and independent and swing voters, that whole conglomeration voted majority for Donald Trump. I think that helps solidify candidate standing than if you had a very narrow Republican only or just a, a small margin of the party on the right. I think it's better for the party to reach out to all of those voters and show how we can help their lives. All right, and HGOP Chairman Chris Ager, as he noted, the fight beginning already for First of the Nation 2028. Thank you for your time.